Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to recreate a stylized smoke effect in the style of Brimstone's Sky Smoke ability from Valorant. As you may already know, Valorant is made in Unreal Engine, so I wanted to replicate the effect as close as possible to the original one. Here's a video of the Brimstone's ability recorded inside Valorant. Launching smoke. The smoke effect is actually a sphere with a multi-layer animated texture applied. To achieve this effect, we are going to create a parametric material that will be applied on two spheres with different settings. So let's create this material right away by right-clicking in the content browser and selecting Material. I'm going to call it M Smoke Bomb and open it. First thing to do is to set the material blend mode to translucent. In this way, the opacity pin becomes available. Now, hold 3 on the keyboard and left-click on an empty section of the graph this will create a constant 3 vector that will be our base color. We want it to be editable, so right click on it and select Convert to Parameter and call it Color. Now click on Default Value and set it to a light brown color. Connecting it to the base color will result in a just brownish sphere, so I'm going to use two textures. I've made them available on Gumroad, check the description of this video for the link, and note that they are free, but if you want to support me, you can enter any price you want. Back in Unreal, let's drop the two textures in the smoke bomb material. The RGB output of the opacity texture goes straight to the opacity pin of the material. Looking at the material preview, you see what the opacity texture purpose is. In fact, the material uses the black and white values in the texture as a mask for the opacity, where the black is transparent, and white is fully opaque. For the other texture, let's multiply its RGB output with the color parameter and then connect the output of the multiply to the base color of the material. Now let's animate the material by moving the two textures together. We could do that using a panner node. This node has three inputs, coordinate, time, and speed. Starting from the easiest one, time, it just needs a time node, so let's add it and connect it. This will make the material aware of the passing of time. Next, we need to give the panner some UV coordinates to move around, so we add a text score node and we create also a constant by holding one on the keyboard and clicking on the canvas, convert the constant to parameter and call it scale. Now we can multiply it with the texture coordinate and connect the output to the coordinate of the panner. The parameter we created is useful to scale the texture as needed when instancing this material. For now, we can set it to 2. Before moving on, one important thing to check is the real-time checkbox in the preview options. Now let's connect the output of the panner to the two UV input of the textures, and we will see that nothing happens. That's normal because we have the speed of the panner set to 0. The two values indicate how fast the panner has to move the texture vertically and horizontally. We could just set values here, but we are going to do the same thing as before, and create two constants and convert them to parameters called H speed and V speed. Then we join them using an append node and connect it to the speed input of the panner. Now changing the values of these two parameters will make the texture shift over time, as you can see in the preview window. I'm going to set the horizontal speed to minus 0.3 and the vertical to 0.2. Okay, the material is now complete. Let's save it. Back in the level viewport, we can see the material in action by creating a sphere, scaling it to a factor of 6 or 7, and applying the smoke bomb material to it. Right now, we have half of the effect, because we need to create an opaque sphere inside our translucent sphere. To make things more easy to manage, I'm going to create a blueprint. This will make also easier to spawn the smoke bomb from other blueprints. Delete the sphere created before and create a new actor blueprint called BP Smoke Bomb and open it. Here we are going to add two static mesh components and call them Outer Sphere and Inner Sphere. Then in both of them, set the static mesh property to Sphere. We are going to scale the Outer Sphere to 7 and the Inner Sphere just a little below, like 6.9. Apply to the outer sphere the smoke bomb material, and you should see the inner sphere emerging from below. Now let's put those parameters we created before to work, 
go back in the content browser and right click the smoke bomb material and select create material instance. I'm going to call it MI smoke fill and open it. Here you can set the parameters created before and also override other settings of the material. The first we are going to change is the blend mode of the material, switching it from translucent to opaque and thus making it ignore the opacity texture. At this point we need to differentiate this material that will be applied to the inner sphere from its parent, so let's change the color parameter by darkening it a bit. Then we are going to change the three scalar parameters for speed and scale. I'm going to set the H speed to minus 0.2 and the V speed to 0.1. This will slow down the texture shift performed by the panner, so we will see the outer layer rotate faster than the inner one. Finally, the scale parameter should be set to 1 to differentiate even more the two layers. Okay, the material instance is complete. We can save it and go back to the smoke bomb blueprint. Here, we just need to select the inner sphere mesh and assign it the MI smoke bomb material instance. The blueprint viewport already shows the result, but let's see it in action in our level. Save the blueprint and drop it in the level. You can see how the two layers with different settings create a nice effect, resulting in something quite similar to the one seen in Valorant. That's all guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, please subscribe to the channel and if you want to take your support to the next level, be sure to check out my Patreon page in the video description. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, keep on creating and cheers!